today's upload is taking forever. That's taking a while to upload. So while that is uploading, I'm going to go ahead and get these Sentra tail lights back together. All right, got all these little reflectors in. Now we can put them inside the housing, send a picture to the customer and make sure that they like everything that they see. There we go, got these lenses on, they are curing. This one's cured to the touch. So we can look at it. Uh, I don't know which way this goes. That looks cool. So clear inner housing, black trim on the outside. Gotta let the customer know, see if they like it. And uh, if they do, then we can seal it up and ship it out. But we are gonna move on to these Mustang lights. We need to make the ghost module. I'm gonna show you how we do that. This is a blue ghost module. It's made by Ghost Lighting. It's a Bluetooth controller for the adjustable LEDs. You probably know that already. So what we're gonna do here is completely wire it up to work with our Mustang lights, and then we're gonna pot it to make it waterproof. I've tried to make wiring these up as efficient as possible, so right up here I have an entire wiring rack. I could use a lot more wire on here, but this is what I use for most of wiring this. Obviously we got our power, and then this is gonna go out to our data and ground and our inputs, and then right here is the important stuff. That is loom so that you can protect all the wires and it makes it look a lot more professional. I try to wire up every single harness the same so that we don't have to think too hard about it. Once you do one set, then you can do all of them. The rack is over there and we have this mark on the ground right here. That's to mark out how long of a power and ground wire we need to get from the trunk to the front of the car. For our data wires, I just do an arm's length, just a little bit longer than my arm's length. We have all the wire cut. Next thing I'm gonna do is take the Blue Ghost module out of the box. With Blue Ghost 1, I did not I used to take it out of the box, but since Blue Ghost 2 has the screw terminals that sit right up on the edge of the box, it makes it a lot more difficult to uh, pot it and have the wires just look like it seamlessly goes into the box. Blue Ghost is out of the box. Now we are going to put all the wires in and then we can do the loom. This strategy that I'm doing right here is something that Garrett came up with whenever he was here and I really like it. So I've kept doing it since he left. So he did, he did one turn signal wire that's still attached to the data wires that go out to the actual addressable LEDs so that whenever you loom it and it goes out to the taillights themselves, it looks a little more OEM, a little more professional. Okay, I wanted to show you the thought process, a little bit of a, a diagram of the wiring before I loom it. So obviously we got power and ground going to the front of the vehicle. That's cool. So over here is all of our inputs and we're using park brake and the two turns. Turn signal is going to be blue because this doesn't have yellow in it. So we're using yellow as our blue. And then for our power data and ground, it's gonna be the normal colors, which is red, green, black. So both of these are gonna go out to one that's gonna have the turn signal in it. And of course the data wire going out to it. Then the one that we keep together, we don't actually split all the way is in this other turn signal slot and it runs out to the other side of the vehicle. We're gonna loom it all together so that it looks like it's one wire going out there. There's going to be two connectors on one side, one connector on the other. That way the customer cannot plug them in wrong. Got that loomed out. You can see with the loom on there, it's just so much cleaner, but we do have to add ends on it. So I'm going to put inline fuse and then a battery terminal end, and we're going to add connectors on this side. All right, we've got the connectors on. One thing you should do whenever you're wiring up connectors is make sure that you have enough of your loom to cover. Make sure you have enough of your loom to cover up your solder points, your heat shrink, just so that it looks a little bit cleaner. See how much better that is without seeing the several different heat shrinks. Now we are going to wire them into the custom harness that we made for the Mustang lights. 
uh, and we're actually gonna tap into the OEM harness, the plug. So the back of the Mustang itself is completely sealed. They do that to keep it watertight and the only hole that they have is going to be this grommet right here. That allows the tail light harness to go through there. So we're actually gonna have to take this connector and stick it through here. We're gonna put it through the grommet so that the customer doesn't have to like try and jimmy it in between the grommet and the body. Gotta make sure that this grommet is watertight so the water is not getting into the trunk of the vehicle. Got the connectors wired in. You can see that we went through the grommet so that's completely waterproof still. And they are tapped into the OEM harness and they can disconnect them and reconnect them all they want. It is side specific. So on this side, we use a four pin. On this side, we use two three pins. That way the customer cannot connect them wrong and it should be pretty obvious where they go. Now that we have the harness done, it's time to actually do the potting epoxy. Potting epoxy is gonna protect the circuit board and it's also gonna make it completely waterproof. It's just like any other epoxy where you have the epoxy and a hardener. So we're gonna mix them together. It's gonna be two to one. And then we're gonna pour it in here and let it cure. The only problem with this box, the way that it's set up now is that there are holes on both sides. What I found that works really well to actually seal these holes up so that the potting epoxy doesn't fall out while you're curing it is just some electrical tape. Once it's completely cured, the electrical tape comes off and it's just like a flat side on the box. Now that this is completely cured, you can take off the electrical tape and it leaves a very smooth finish underneath. This is really hard to do one-handed, I'm sorry. Very smooth finish underneath on both sides. So the next thing I'm gonna do is actually trim up the box a little bit so that I can get all these wires out. And then we're gonna put the cover on, bolt it down, throw it in the box and ship them out. And there we go. Nice, clean little blue ghost box. I do wish I could get this sheathing in there a little bit more, the loom. I wish I could get the loom in there a little bit more. But since the screw terminals are right there on against the box, it makes it a little more difficult. I have seen a few guys who've been flipping the screw terminals over and resoldering them back on the board so they can keep everything a little bit more tight knit. Uh, I've thought about doing that. It would make it a lot cleaner, but it's also going to add like an extra 30 minutes to an hour per build. So over time, that's just going to add up and be, it's just going to take too long. Okay. Send her pictures, waiting for a response on that. Let's get these Mark V super lights cleaned up. We're just going to do a quick little buff on the lenses since they're not perfectly clear. We're going to try and clean it up. It is the first set of clear lenses for the Mark V, so it may not clean up as well as, let's say, some of the Miata lights. Got these cleaned up. They are they're okay. I still think it's probably like a six or seven out of 10. I wish we could get the lenses a little clearer, but that's that's how they're gonna be at the moment. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do another layer of silicone just to make sure that they don't leak and then we will ship them out to the customer. The super lights are cured and they are ready to ship out. I made the video on them, so we are good to go. Super lights are boxed up box up the Mustangs. But first, we're gonna test them. These have been tested a million times already, but you would be surprised how many times you'll find something right before you ship out, even though you've tested them dozens of times before that. That final test right before shipping is very important, especially for anything color shifting related. They're working. We're good here. I'm gonna go ahead and check all the inputs, make sure that works. But uh, yeah, these things, these things are so much fun. I love these. Tested all the inputs, the parking light is good. I didn't have to change the LED type on the Blue Ghost module because red was green, green was red. So you had to switch it around so that all the colors match. And now the parking light is the correct color. Uh, I always thought this was funny, a little blue LED in there. Okay, now we are boxing them up, shipping them out. Well, the day in the light videos are done for this week. Uh, this, was, this was a really cool experiment. Uh, I, I've never daily vlogged before. 
I actually had a lot of fun doing it. It did slow me down quite a bit with work, so I, I have to stop it for now. But uh, I, I hope you found it interesting to see what I do every day here at NTX Glow. Anyone else is a builder? Do, does does my day look the same as yours or do you do stuff wildly different? Just let me know. I'd be really curious to know and possibly learn how to do things faster and more efficient.